For this year's Heritage Fair project, I am doing Canadian residential schools. The questions for research are, why did Canada decide to take the natives away from their homes? How long this lasted for? The amount of kids in the schools? What happened in these schools daily? And the after effects? The reason why Canada took the First Nations children away from their home was because they wanted to eliminate the Indian culture in Canada. Duncan Scott wrote in a government document, I want to get rid of the Indian problem. I want to continue until there are no more Indian cultures in Canada. Canada believed it would only take two generations to eliminate the whole Indian culture. All the children aged 7 to 15 had to attend these schools. The children were taken out of their homes by Indian agents or the RCMP. Many of the schools allowed the families to pick their kids' schools except for the Catholic schools because they had fears the church's influence would fade. The churches ran these schools and the more students they could get to attend, the more money the churches would get for funding. Employees at these residential schools were very happy. They were now civil servants making more money and working few hours for the federal government. The schools first started opening in 1857. There were approximately 150,000 children enrolled in these schools. All of the schools remained open until 1969 when the United Churches started to close. After 139 years of suffering, the final federally ran school closed in Saskatchewan in 1996. The United Church was the first church to apologize in 1886 between 1991 and 1999. The Oblates of Mary Immaculate from the Roman Catholic Church, the Anglican Church and the Presbyterian Churches also issued apologies. In 1931, there were 80 schools running and by 1948, there were 9,368 kids in 72 schools. All of these schools were run by Anglican, Catholic, Presbyterian and United Churches. There were schools in every province except Newfoundland, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. Mm -hmm. The reason they did not have schools in these provinces is because they believed there were not enough aid natives in the areas. Phil Fontaine is credited for being the first person to go public about the abuse he suffered. He told what happened every day. He said the children that attended these schools were poorly fed, closed, and housed. They were taught English and ate the white people's diet. Language and cultural practices were not allowed. They were deprived of the care and nurturing of their parents, families, and communities. These schools were very lonely places for the kids. Dr. Peter Bryce, a former medical inspector for the Depa Department of Indian Affairs, determined half the children died in some of the schools or just never returned home. A lot of them ran away and died from drowning or freezing. The deaths were unreported and most were buried in unmarked graves. It is rumored that priests abused the children physically as well. They said that they would often call children into a small room, telling them that their parents had called or were visiting them and would abuse them. Some of the children were beaten with sticks for speaking their language or forgetting their own names because they had to respond to numbers. Many of the teachers had no professional training. As adults, many survivors of these schools still suffer pain, rage, and grief for this abuse. Some of them will never get over the abuse they suffered. Many tried to escape through marriage or domestic partnership, but were often overwhelmed by family life. Some were also re-victimized by domestic violence or themselves became the abusers of their parents or children. Many others had died early because of suicide or from alcohol, leaving their families to live on their own. In conclusion, these residential schools were open to eliminate the Indian cultures. The schools were ran by churches. When all the schools were shut down, children started to share their stories, and in 2006, Stephen Harper apologized for what Canada had done to them. Money may be a way of saying sorry, but it will never take away what we had done to them. I learned a lot while doing this report. I think it was wrong to take the First Nations away just because they didn't believe in different things. I thought it was very sad the way the schools treated these children, and I couldn't believe when I read about what happened to them. I am glad the Canada finally apologized and closed these schools down. The only thing now is that a lot of people are suffering because of this, and no money in the world will ever take that away.